Hey everybody, this is Jim Grisanzio from the Oracle Groundbreakers team, and I'm here with David Stokes and Lafred to talk about MySQL. I met these guys um, earlier in the year in Brussels, and for their MySQL for the MySQL engineering event, and it was a fantastic event. I met them for the first time there and became friends, and so I suggested that we get together. To talk about MySQL, MySQL is so big, it's got two community managers, and uh, so welcome, guys. How you doing? Doing great. Fine, good. fine. Good, good. One of the things I noticed uh, recently is that you guys had a uh, 25th anniversary. I know the Java team has had a big event as well. I didn't realize MySQL was 25 years old. What's up with that? How did that go? Well, it's kind of shocking because we've always been the bright and shiny up and coming product, and so we're 25 years old. It's, uh, <laughs> it's a little shocking, um, but it, it's great. It shows the ubiquity of MySQL that it's still there and still thriving and still growing. So, so, uh, and we are still very popular. Yeah. Because uh, last year, so in 2019, we got uh, an award of, of DB Engine to be uh, the RDBMS of the year. So, 25 years, per still. Young and full of energy. <laughs> so, um, with the twenty-five years, I mean, are you guys going to be doing sort of? Is this going to be like, like a sort of like a rolling thing where you you know have events and sort of remembrances and 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 things like that? I mean, the community's been around for a long time, so we're talking about a lot of people who would presumably have stories and you know you'd be interested in sort of you know telling their stories, right? Uh, it'd be interesting if we could. On the 20th anniversary, we had a community reception as part of Oracle Open World. And we were able to get our original CEO, Martin Mikos, there uh, with our current uh, MySQL head, Rich Mason, to cut a cake that said 20 on there. And that was kind of like, oh my God, 20 years. If we can we keep this up for another 20 years, we might have something. Um, with the COVID crisis, the lack of travel, and everyone being gun shy, and uh, I have a lot of friends that are very conscious before all this of going to conferences and getting what they call the conference crud. Um, we might have to do something online, but I don't know if that would be uh, of interest to a lot of folks. You know, a bunch of us um, old farts talking, you know, hey, remember when we, we could not do transactions and before we had this and before we had that? Um, I don't know. It might be popular for reminiscing, but I don't think it'd be very popular to a lot of uh, developers out there. So what... What's it? So, David, you're in Texas, right? Yes, sir. And, Lafred, you're in, in Belgium. Sure. And you guys basically, in terms of the community management, you guys basically split things up, you know, on geography, right? So you have like a global sort of a perspective. Around the clock, you guys are involved. Well, we try to divide and conquer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it depends of, uh, of events. Like uh, like you said earlier in Brussels, Dave was there to uh, to help me because it was uh, for us a very big event and uh, a lot a lot uh, logistic to to do. So for me alone, it's quite complicated. So Dave was there, and on the big events in US, uh, like uh, Open World, uh, I I, uh, I go there also uh, to take part of the team and to to help along there. Is there anything interesting that's going on in the community? When I was there um, for your event earlier in the year, um, one of the things that struck me was that there was an enormous amount of content. I think it was two days, right? Yeah. Uh, it was just back to back, uh, an enormous amount of, of technical content. And there was a buzz, there was a, there was a palpable buzz where people were actively talking and, and you know, building things. Uh, there were individual developers there. There were, you know, companies there. And I, I had a real sense that this is a thriving community. Now, things, obviously, we're all sort of, you know, land-based now. But is there anything interesting going on that we can talk about in terms of, you know, maybe from that conference or any specific projects that, you know, come to mind that are, you know, becoming more prominent recently? Well, we, we've, we've been adding new features every quarter. We're on the uh, continuous integration, continuous development bandwagon. So roughly every three months, we have a new version coming out. Um, had a lot of excitement around hash joins. Uh, there, there's a lot of things that uh, Oracle database users will hear that, oh my God, you folks have that. Um, so we, um, 
and find it is, is kind of. Uh, what's really interesting to me is you go out to, uh, to the LinkedIn. I manage the MySQL group on LinkedIn, or you go out to mysqlcommunity.slack.com um, and, and look at the explosion of people asking questions. Uh, you go out to Stack Overflow, and there's always more and more questions. Uh, on LinkedIn, the group has just been growing almost exponentially over the past six, seven months. So there, there's something still there that's exciting about MySQL, even though it's reaching uh, 25 years and uh, uh, not the hot enough and coming piece of software out there, but it still has so much utility. Yeah, and as you say, Jim, uh, uh, the the event you you have been part where the people were meeting the developers, right, the engineering team. These are special because in MySQL we try to keep the full community together, right, and the the what we can say the newbies or people discovering MySQL right. and that that event was not made for for them we have plenty of other events where we focus on helping uh, new coming or new DBAs but uh, that event was very more uh, as you could see the the audience there knew what we are talking about there were uh, skilled DBAs or skilled uh, developers and when they meet these engineers, we take also the, the feedback to prepare what will be in the next release. For example, uh, pre uh, the previous events like this, we, we were discussing with uh, DBAs and they were telling, okay, uh, bin lock compression. Some of the big, big pr um, uh, companies had issue with the, the amount of bin locks and the size of them. And they were discussing, oh, bin lock compression, that would be great but we would like it like this or like that. Then we talk about contribution from uh, other big companies like in Japan. And uh, so we were discussing what will be the best way to do that. And so all this discussion happened on this kind of event. And finally in 8020, we have bin lock compression that is now in MySQL 8. This is one of the many, many examples. So uh, we try to focus on usability for the um, or the new DBA, up to talking very deeply technical with uh, this, uh, I would say, guru of MySQL. Right? I tell the newbies, you know, if you have questions, go out to mysqlcommunity.slack.com or forums.mysql.com and ask your question. Um, I mean, the engineers are willing to, uh, to give their time to answer complicated questions. We have dedicated people in the community who will ask their general quest questions. And the only caveat I have is sometimes we tend to get verbose. So when we're talking too much, tell us to please shut up. <laughs> uh, that's actually an interesting observation because when I was there, just sitting in the audience and, and talking to people, uh, people were very chatty and they were, and they were very, you know, and they were very willing to engage. Um, and so, you know, and I specifically asked the question, I mean, you know, when new people get involved, how do they get involved? And, and stuff and they had there were obviously many answers and many things you can do asking questions fixing bugs these kinds of things participating on mailing lists um, but what kind of struck me is that people were really interested in getting new people involved so you know it's 25 years old but new people are always getting involved and that seemed to me that was my impression you know uh, I think that's probably the only MySQL event I've ever been to so it's my first impression um, we need to get you to more. <laughs> What's that? We need to get you to more MySQL events. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was sort of, it was sort of in the plan, you know. Um, oh, a year from now, all the Java guys. Hey, what happened to the Jim guy? We kind of lost him. Oh, he went <laughs> off into the MySQL universe, and then we lost him forever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I had I had a lot of big plans earlier in the year. Um, was mapping out my travel schedule for the whole year. Um, but I think you were, were very lucky. You are very lucky to be at that event. Really? Uh, for the first time. I mean, your first step in the MySQL community was that event. Because I think it's one of the better events, even, uh, let's say, I try to, to say so without uh, modesty, right? Because it's managed by us, and there is a plenty of other events managed by other people in the community that are awesome. But other events sometimes are also people pay for it. This one was a free event. Right. And uh, we also, because the day after was uh, the FOSDEM uh, dev room, where it's also a free event. And at this free event, we try also to engage and to encourage new speakers to join 
And you saw that uh, some of the, the talks were very small, like 30 minutes max, it's 25 right. minutes. So we try to have uh, at least one or two speakers that are completely new in the community as a speaker to give them the chance because when they submit talks to other big events that are pay events, they don't get the chance to speak because they don't have that experience maybe. So we try to, to involve them speaking in our free events. If, it's, if they are bad, because that could happen, hopefully it never happened to, to, to us yet, but if they are very bad, okay, you lose 25 minutes of your day. But if they are good, then people discover them and then it, it gives them the chance to, to go in other com, uh, community events for my scale, which is very what we also try to, to achieve. Now that we're talking about conferences, you know, one of the things that um, I've noticed just on Twitter, um, both of you guys are participating in various online events. And obviously the whole, the whole tech world is doing this. Um, can you give me just a just summary basically about you know, what you've done in the last couple of months, um, you know, what you're talking about, what's hot, and, uh, and, and basically how's it going? Because each one of these events has a slightly different format. You know, most people are using Zoom, but some people are using different applications. So how's that going for you? It's kind of crazy. Um, this is this would normally be the crazy time of my year where I'm off on the road a whole lot. Excuse me a second. I have a dog who's uh, but it's one of those things where um, I, I love the particip participating to an audience and actually being able to see an audience and talk to them. Um, so talking to a sterile screen and a microphone isn't um, isn't uh, is enjoyable for me, but uh, I've mainly been talking about new features in MySQL 8. It's the old Pareto optimum where 80% um, of your users are using 20% of the features. And last December, I was talking in London and I mentioned a new feature and this guy got very angry in the back of the room and I found out later that uh, if he had known about this new feature that we've had for six months, that we'd have saved him about two months worth of time. So it's one of those things where I'm going out there and I'm, I was speaking at Midwest PHP I spoke to the cPanel folks, uh, Open Source uh, 101, all on new features of, of MySQL, uh, stuff that we've put out in the past uh, two years. Uh, two days ago, I spoke to the DB Ask Me Anything about JSON Table. Um, MySQL is the only open source database out there with JSON Table, which is a function that takes your unstructured JSON data and temporarily makes it structured for processing with SQL. And also our JSON document validation that we're uh, we got the idea from jsonschema.org where you have an exemplar a document and you test it against the incoming data before it gets in your database. Uh, so you catch the bad stuff before it gets in there. Good stuff there is you now have required fields, uh, data uh, checks and range checks before your, um, your data gets going. Um, also had a talk at Linux Fest Northwest online. Um, uh, was coming, and I have an op at the open source summit. I'm going to be giving another talk on MySQL features. So it's it's great going there and talking to new stuff. But I kind of miss the audience because I have a lot of good jokes out there, and it's just not the same when you don't get the response from the punchline. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's definitely a different different paradigm. Um, but you know, there are some disadvantages, obviously. But it actually opens up some. It, you know, some opportunities for people as well. Uh, but also, I mean, this, everyone's online now. So it's, it's like there's an overflow, there's an avalanche of events now. A lot of them are overlapping. So, um, well, a lot of event organizers are, are kind of wondering, do we, in the future, do we keep online? Um, no, they kind of like the, in, the, on, the uh, in-person shows, vendors like being able to uh, collect leads and shake hands and talk product boost. Right. Um, but maybe for some speakers, you know, you don't want to pay that ticket to, to fly someone halfway around the world. You pre-record their stuff and have them live for Q&A. Uh, we'll have to see how that changes. Yeah, to be honest, uh, uh, like Dave, uh, I think this opportunity of being uh, not on the road gives me the opportunity to talk to different people because usually, for example, let's say if I am in Japan and at the same time there is a... Uh, a conference in Israel, I have to decline uh, the one in Israel because I am in Japan. And at this period, there is a lot of conferences everywhere usually. And so I have to decline several ones. And uh, this time I try to not decline any. So uh, not next week, but the week after I have three conferences the same week. 
So uh, I wow. will be part of uh, Israel Oracle user group. Uh, I've been invited there on Monday. On Wednesday, I will uh, talk uh, to uh, Open Expo Europe virtual conference. And uh, on uh, Thursday, uh, I will talk uh, about uh, in, uh, in Japan, yeah, in Japan, virtually in Japan, uh, on the MySQL Cafe number eight. Since you have a lot of events and you're reaching a lot of people, you know, f from, you know, from a virtual space, do you find that a lot of these people are following up with you and engaging with you? Like, I, I, at least attempting to engage with you like they would if it were a physical event? Uh, it's a bit uh, different, I would say. Uh, for example, yesterday we had a WePay meetup. So Oracle and Pay made a big meetup together. And uh, after my session, I had several questions that usually uh, uh, people are shy to, to ask. Here, it was typing, so they, it's easy for for them to, to ask the question. And uh, I point them to a blog post uh, I wrote or, and then I saw just after the conference that I had some new followers on Twitters mm -hmm. and then question came, then people joined Slack because I discussed about, okay, if you want to look for me, I, we, are in the, we have a community Slack. And then I see people uh, joining, but I see that also in, during the real conference, exactly almost the same but less questions or questions more, less from newbies. But like two weeks ago, I had the chance to uh, make a, a keynote for Percona Life uh, virtual conference. It was 24 hours of, of open databases. And uh, I asked, because they, they had a chat, I asked who was, who was the first time uh, attending that conference? Because that conference is quite popular, but it was the first time online. And there was a lot of new people right. that don't have the, the chance to, to pay the, the ticket to Austin in Austin last year. And uh, so this is also, the, let's say, the positive point of doing virtual. And, and when it's free, uh, it's that a lot of people around the world can join that usually they don't have the chance to, to get a ticket or maybe the job don't tell them, okay, you can go now. Uh, if you're in India and you have to go to, to Austin, uh, for two days of conference, it's maybe expensive or you need to take more days uh, to travel and stuff, which virtual conference doesn't, uh, uh, yeah, you don't have that, so it's easy to do. But so for people, it's nicer, but for me and for Dave, we are much more busy than usual, to be honest, <laughs> because it's, uh, you, we need to prepare new content uh, all the time. And, more frequently, uh, right. Yes. Right. And it, it's cool, I mean, but uh, it, it's a, uh, I never work that much, to be honest, because all that work, sometimes I, I do flying. I prepare, you know, uh, but now I don't do that flying. But mean, meanwhile, uh, I have, uh, I'm replying uh, to the developers, replying to people on Slack, uh, on the forums, uh, doing my blog post, testing the new stuff. So all the work is still there, plus the conference, plus the preparation. So. I'm quite busy, to be honest. Very, very busy. And we are available for anything besides birthday parties and bar mitzvahs. So if you have a conference coming up there and you want Fred or myself or both of us, <laughs> let us know. Do you think this lasts with this volume of events? Um, yes and no. I, I'm, I'm hoping we get back to the live events because I, I like a real hallway track. Uh, as Fred says, there's a lot of folks who are shy about typing out their question. Yeah. Uh, heck, they're still shy about showing up at a live conference, but occasionally they'll, they'll come and say, hey, I, I've been thinking about this, and you'll start a dialogue with them. Um, it, it's nice not having to sit in those uncomfortable airline seats for several hours on end to, to get to the conferences, but I miss the interaction with the people. I miss going around and seeing what the other vendors uh, do, and also whenever I go to a conference, I always look on the schedule for something that I know absolutely nothing about, and yeah. I'm glad to get into that talk uh, just for self-education. But like Fred said, we are, are busier now. Um, heck, there's an email a couple of weeks ago, a uh, quote from Murray Ellison himself, who was saying, you know, Zoom is great, but he's all these meetings now. So, Is there a part of the world, so these conferences that you would ordinarily be going to, you know, flying to, like LaFred, you mentioned Japan, um, is there 
um, any trends recently in terms of growth or active interest in any specific part of the world since you guys basically split up the whole world together? Well, the, the, the one funny thing for me uh, living just north of Fort Worth is a lot of the bigger conferences uh, like the Bracona Conference and the Open Source Summits move around. And for some reason this year, they all seem to have picked Austin, and uh, which is a two and a half hour drive for me. So it's kind of like, well, I, I, I won't get the airline miles, but I, I get to go down to Austin, you know, hang out in Con South Congress and uh, go to see the live, live music capital of the world. Um, it, it depends. The, the shows themselves tend to um, pick the big cities. You know, the bigger shows have to pick the big cities that have the convention centers. Uh, some of the smaller ones, like some of the PHP shows I go to that may attract three to 500 people. Um, talking to their organizers, they're not really so impacted. It's some of the bigger shows that are in the Raleigh's or the San Francisco's where they really don't know, you know, six months down the road what the health implications, implications are, uh, what the requirements are going to be for insurance and stuff like that. So it's too early to tell what the future is going to be uh, for trending that way. But I, I do miss the live shows and the human interaction. Yeah, yeah. I think in Europe you won't have a live show in, in 2020 anymore. But we have I saw some uh, in November uh, asking if for, uh, you know, like in Italy, there is some in November show that are postponed to November. I mean, but I, I don't think that will happen uh, because... Uh, Autumn uh, seems to be, nobody knows what's going on, right? So I think in, uh, in 2020, we won't have live show anymore uh, for us, uh, or in Europe at least. Yeah. But, uh, I doubt in US and uh, let's see. <laughs> yeah, well, the, the, the big uh, barometer I'm looking at will be FOSDEM 2021. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're, Fred once again, once again do the yeoman work there, uh, doing 99.99% of the organization for that. Um, um, well, yeah, if, in, in Belgium until August, and uh, there will not be any uh, events. Uh, I mean, like concerts uh, outside or inside. All that kind of events are all uh, not allowed uh, right now until end of August. In Belgium. Right. So things are opening that, um, up. Things are opening up here a little bit now. Um, I, I actually noticed. The, there's a couple of groups in Tokyo that I used to participate in. They're starting to meet live now, but very, very small. And um, so, but you know, yeah, in Belgium we are ten people max. Yeah, yeah, it's 10 you know, things max like that. Right now right. in Belgium, so it's uh, yeah. So we have traveling if, for ten people. It's uh, <laughs> it's too so if too if Fotsdam is the next event, let's say that'll be a year. That'll be a year since I met you guys. Yes. So. Um, Hey, I have a question about joining communities. Since you guys are community managers, among other things that you do, so if I'm, I'm a, if I'm a young developer or just really any developer, and um, um, trip over MySQL, I need it for my job, and you know, it, how do I, how do I get involved? What's the to throw out some things that I can do to get involved. Um, you know, I'm going to have to build something at work. I'm going to, you know, I'd like to be able to contribute code, maybe fix some bugs or contribute a feature or, you know, whatever. What are some types of things? And, and also, where do I go to do this? Uh, GitHub, it's, I would say, uh, it's, the, it's the place to be. Our code base is there. And uh, so as... Um, most of the, the project that have also business uh, around it, right? You need to sign an OCA if you want to contribute code. You need to sign an OCA. And uh, when it's signed, you can contribute your code. And uh, once it's, it's uh, let's say, you send it, then a process starts where you discuss with the developers, they check your patch and all that kind of stuff. And it's fun because, uh, you know, we hear always uh, sometimes, uh, uh, what's true or false with MySQL, and there are, there are all this uh, uh, stuff that oh MySQL doesn't take any uh, contribution, right? Uh, which is completely false because we are completely GPL and all our products are GPL. And for example, just a number for MySQL 8.0 up to 8.020, uh, 
we had 264 contributions. Wow. Oh. So uh, it, we take contribution and we take a lot of contribution. And uh, let, let's say the, and from everywhere. So we, we had Facebook, uh, but also uh, indiv individual people. For example, we have uh, Daniel Van Eder. It's somebody from Holland working from Booking. Uh, only him sends 39 contributions for MySQL 8.0. 39, so, uh, did you say? 39, yes. So uh, currently we had uh, six, uh, 58 individual contributors, meaning not employees, people outside of, uh, of MySQL uh, team uh, contributing to MySQL 8. So it's a lot. So if you are a newbie and you want to, and there was somebody uh, recently on Slack asking about it, I would tell maybe check uh, bugs to fix, right? Uh, because there are some bugs. And also, if you don't know what to do yet, documentation bugs. So uh, also documentation, it's easy to, uh, I don't say it's easy to write, <laughs> please. But uh, Typos, you find a typo or something like that, or a sentence that doesn't make sense to you or something like that, it could happen. Then contribute, uh, if you want to start being in the, in, the, in the process, you can do that. And then if the code base, it's, it's C++, it's quite, can be complicated. Uh, we have uh, also a wonderful tool, which is MySQL Shell, that allows you to type, to write Python or JSON, uh, JavaScript code in, uh, in, in, the, in MySQL with the, with the server, you can co connect to it and create your own plugins. So um, this is also one thing to, cool to do if you, have a, if you want to create a wizard or something, you say, oh, uh, this is an operation I want to do often, but it's very complicated uh, to do. I want to create a plugin to do all that for me, to automate all that. You can do it, it's in Python most of the time, and you can uh, contribute that uh, back. Uh, so it's also one way to, uh, to get in this, in this ecosystem. Well, one thing, if I can interject, uh, the OCA or Oracle Contributor Agreement. Years ago, I spoke at the Linux Foundation uh, Leadership Summit, talking about how MySQL has evolved with the OCA. And I did not know I was speaking to a room of 80% lawyers. And I basically talked about the MySQL uh, contributor process, how it's evolved over the past uh, quarter century. And then I actually read all five paragraphs of the OCA. Um, it's a, a very easy to read, actually written in English, not in legalese. And it basically says, hey, this is my code. It's no one else's code. Um, if I want to pull it out later, um, the code can't come out because we might be depending on it. But you, you have limited rights. Uh, Oracle has limited rights, and it spells them out in detail. Uh, so if you have any questions and you are a coder, um, you can download the OCA and read it. Uh, like I said, it's five or five paragraphs or so. It written in in, in um, non legalese, very easy to understand. And once you get that out there, we can take your your patches or additions, uh, no problem. And we willingly will do that. And we will thank you very profusely. Uh, Fred has a uh, uh, I guess they call it noise chart of all the various folks who contribute stuff for uh, AO. And it's um, every time I turn around, it it seems to be getting more and more dense with all these different things out there. So you've both mentioned s several platforms: GitHub, obviously Slack, and I think I think LinkedIn. Um, this just like all communities, like you know Facebook, maybe these people are distributed all over the place. Do you have any centralized place where you have your discussions, or is it just distributed? Well, the the main place used to be forums.myschool.com which I think now is like 62 different subforums. But over the past year or so, it's been transitioning over to uh, mysqlcommunity.slack.com. Uh, they're both very valuable. Uh, and of course, there's things on Reddit, uh, Stack Overflow, Quora, um, you name it. Uh, there's even a uh, community site off one of the Oracle community pages. Um, and I patrol most of those on a fairly regular basis. So it's all over there, but the, the, the Slack and the forums are probably the main two to really concentrate on. And the, the source of truth, I would say, if you contribute, it's bugs.mysql.com. There is where you send your code. And uh, when somebody push, uh, let's say on GitHub, push a, 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 patch is there, a patch there, it creates a bug on bugs.mysql.com. And then all communication will be uh, in that bug. Uh, 
a number, we we track everything from there. So right. after, if you want to discuss that on Slack or everywhere else, you can always use that bug ID is where we're going to put comments uh, or people will chat together. This is the source of truth for, for us. All the rest, it's not noise, it's just help. But I mean, if you want to contribute, bugs.mysql.com is the, is the platform. All right. Well, we've got new people contributing. We've got more established developers. We've got individual developers. We have companies, lots of events, thriving community, 25 years old, two community managers, and somewhat of interest, me. <laughs> um, Cool. Guys, thanks a lot. Really appreciate it. It was great talking to you. It was great meeting you a few months ago. And uh, stay well. And uh, maybe every six months or so we'll get together and talk MySQL. Sound good? Sounds great. Perfect. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Have a good one. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.